Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome to Time Out with Yomi Martins. And this is your favorite guy again, Yomi Martins from the city of Lagos, Nigeria. On this channel, you know what we'll do, personal finance, passive income, and everything to put money in that Ducci bag. Now, if that's the kind of content you love, please spend a few minutes to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, right and drop us a comment on topics you would want to see on this channel with that out of the way let's dive in today we are diving into an essential topic which is what to do when we get paid it's a step-by-step -step effective paycheck routine because a lot of people find out that they they got collect their paycheck every month some if you're in the US on a weekly basis and all that and you do not actually know how the money goes let's transform our financial habits many people find themselves living paycheck to paycheck but with no structured routine at all you can manage your finances effectively and even start savings for the future believe me it's not that crazy. It's not that difficult. Now, let's start with the first step, the very, very first step, which is to review your paycheck. Review your paycheck. Take a close look at your earnings. Understand your net income after taxes and deductions. This is your starting point. Then after reviewing your paycheck, you might need to also find some passive income parts of your earnings to add to what you correctly currently earn that won't really take you so much time we'll get into that much further down with that out of the way once you have reviewed your paycheck after taxes that means that is the amount you have for your expenses what they call disposable income so once you have identified your disposable income, the next step to do is to find, to list out your fixed expenses. List your fixed expenses. Identify all your monthly fixed expenses. Your rents, your utilities, insurance, and all subscriptions you have to do. Knowing this amount is crucial for your effective budgeting. What that means is that you might need to work out a spreadsheet list those expenses and put figures beside them right and one hint that i will tell you is this which i normally do you can place a direct debit order on your bank account for the expenses for electricity you know the figure assuming it's 500 dollars or 10,000 naira, as the case may be, depending on where in the world you're staying, you impute a direct debit order on your account to debit your account directly for that amount and that bill to be paid on a specified time in the month. You might choose, okay, pay the bill every 24th because you are paid on the 24th or every 25th or every 26th wherever you are paid so that immediately you don't even need to touch that amount right the bills are paid immediately your water rates paid your rent you don't need to wait till the end of the year before you start telling yourself ah i cannot afford to pay my rent assuming your rent is 1.2 million naira that is if you're staying in nigeria you can decide to debit your account, a direct debit into your account on a monthly basis with a hundred thousand naira. So a hundred thousand naira is moved into another account, which you have you you have created purposely for the payment of your rents. So by the end of the year, you would have accumulated one point two million naira to pay your rents. So you would have managed your finances more effectively that way. Step number three, allocate your variable expenses. Variable expenses come every now and then, right? These are costs that can fluctuate, such as your groceries, 
entertainment and dining out. Set realistic limits based on your past spending habits. You can't just wake up one morning and you have not been spending, for instance, dining out, you have not been spending more than, um, let's say, 10,000 naira on dining out and all of a sudden you decide to go to a fancy Chinese restaurant, right, to eat what is what 50,000 naira or 100,000 naira. That is going to take a big toll on your finances in the first place and it won't work out for you. So you need to set realistic limits based on your spending habits, right? So with that out of the way, you would have done a proper checklist on both your fixed expenses and your variable expenses as well. Now, the next important thing is step four, which is save and invest. You can't do without that. Aim to save at least 20% of your income. Open an high yield savings account or consider investing in stocks or retirement funds to grow your wealth. There is also the option of mutual funds, which is very good. The rates are, uh, are, are quite attractive. You could do treasury bills as well. They are important. I noted the 50 30 20 rule in one of my videos you can decide to watch that if you have seen the video and it has worked out for you you can you know drop me a comment in the comment section meanwhile i'm also going to leave the link to that video of using the 50 30 20 budget rule right for you in the description section so that you can go to it and check it out or i will leave it as an icon on the face of the video as well so savings is the only way saving and investment is the only way you can actually grow grow your wealth you don't only save and keep money in the bank because of inflation and all that stuff you need to also invest now with that out of the way one very important thing to do is step five which is to create emergency fund. Emergencies happen every now and then. Nobody can actually predict it. As a rule of thumb, set aside three to six months worth of living expenses. This fund is crucial for unexpected events, helping you avoid debt. Unexpected events, one can lose his or her job. It's possible. So, before you get yourself in a fix, you need to have put money aside in the first place for the rainy day, right? Because no one knows when the storm will happen. And insurance is also very important because emergency funds are needed. You know, insurance will easily cover some of those emergency funds. I mean, sorry, some of those emergency fund requirements. Emergency fund requirements can include healthcare, it can include probably fire disasters, it can include accidents and such, such, such things. If you need insurance, you can obviously uh, contact me as well because I'm an investment advisor for one of the A-rated insurance firms and I can help you negotiate such insurance deals to give you a good cover so that that would actually act as an emergency form um, fund security for you in the first place. Now, the very last thing to do is step number six, which is constantly reviewing and adjusting your income, expense, allocations, and all that stuff to, to make sure that it is a right fix for you. At the end of each month, evaluate your spending, adjust your budget as needed to reflect all and every change in your income and expenses. By following these steps, you can create a sustainable financial routine that helps you break free from living paycheck to paycheck. Start today and take control of your finances. That is the only way you can you can be extreme, extremely, and I mean it, every word of it, extremely financially comfortable, financially free. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. 
for more tips on personal finance and budgeting. Comment below with your favorite money saving tips. And until I see you again, I remain yours sincerely, Yomi Martins from the city of Lagos, Nigeria. Take care of yourself and don't do what I will not do. Bye for now.